Good morning once again. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. Uh, our next conversation is uh, moving uh, to a community called Idumeje, where uh, Prince Ned Woko has been accused of land grabbing and, of course, also causing or, you know, asking for the arrest of uh, certain indigents of the community. It's uh, a conversation that is, you know, mixed with, you know, so many angles here and there. This morning, we're speaking with uh, an indigent of the Dumeja community, uh, Uche Alibe. Uh, good morning. Thank you for joining us, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. I hope you are hearing me. Yes, we are. Welcome once again. And uh, we also have a spokesman to Ned Woko, uh, Adeni Ifetayo. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me. Great to have you. I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Aligbe uh, to give us, you know, just a, a summary of where all the uh, chaos or crisis is coming from, the allegations and the accusations, uh, land grabbing to build a university, arresting some of the indigents of the uh, community who, of course, uh, had opposed uh, this um, um, idea. So give us a summary of what all of this is about. Thank you very much. Let me start by correcting that impression. Nobody is opposed to an idea of development. We are opposed to the process of seizing people's land for whatever project that it is. That is the problem. We have a process. We have a procedure. We have a way of considering indigents for land free of charge for development purposes. And whenever you come with a project and this process is followed, the procedure taken, and you are granted access to the land, you have no problem. But when you choose to breach the process, you begin to have problem. I think that is the situation we are into uh, currently. All right, so That's Mr. Ali Bey, so in your community, what's the process of, you know, procuring land for whatever project? And how has Mr. Ned Nwoko breached those protocols? First of all, the, the process. The community, after some land tussle with a neighboring community, carved out an area we call development area, where we can allocate land to individuals who come in for development. And how we do it is this. We have a land allocation committee set there by the village. Whatever you want to do, you make your application to this land allocation committee, which interviews you, discusses whatever it is with you, reaches out to the natural ruler of the place, who now gets what we call the Izuane, the town hall meeting into the place, and the land allocation committee will sell the idea to the Izuane, and everybody participates in the discussion, and the decision is reached at that point in time, whether to give or not to give. If the decision is to give, the OB, who is the chairman of that Izuani will be there to have known what decision Izuani has taken. He takes the original application of the applicant and signs approval on it. And the allocation committee now goes to town to allocate land. Where it is virgin land and nothing has happened before, they invite the group we call the ONOTU which is headed by the ESA, to come and please map out the place. When the place is mapped out, it is delivered to whoever has applied and has got his application approved. Where the land has already been mapped out, the committee will just go and give you an allocation paper specifying the landmarks of where you are given. After that, you are home and dry. Okay. The condition then is this. You have told us you are going to use the plot of land for this purpose. You have a given period of time. Usually it's been three years. 
within which to develop this. If you don't do it, the land reverts to the community, which is saying you have no ownership, you have no ownership until you have developed the project. Okay, so Mr. Aligbe. That's the procedure. Okay, so how has Mr. Nedunwoko breached this procedure? How has it been breached? Yes. Yes, first of all, suddenly we saw bulldozers on the 28th of March, 2015, 28th of March, some bulldozers came into a portion of land and started bulldozing. By 4th April, 2015, a group of farmers came to the union meeting to protest that Ned Moko is bulldozing their land, aided by armed men in police uniform and other talks. The union, the union now sent a message asking that Ned Moko should please stop bulldozing farmers' land and called on the community to look into this. It was after all this, we now saw, uh, we now saw a letter, two letters of application written by Linus International, signed, signed by Ned Woko, who uh, um, is the chief executive on that letter, asking for 90 hectares of land to add on to a 33 hectares of land for a golf course. On the 6th, it was dated 8th of March. There was a second one dated 23rd of March from the same source, now asking for land two kilometers by one kilometer along a specific area where he called Ewohimi, that is the boundary town with our town, asking for that for a university. We saw those letters. I'm talking about after a bulldozing has started, and this second letter was dated 23rd of March, the bulldozing started 28th of March, five days interval. And so people were saying, what is going on? Before we knew it, somewhere June or July, a, a June, a paper showed up, a location letter from the, from the OB of the town. The OB of the town does not give a location letter. He signs your application on top of it an approval, and then you get a paper of allocation from the committee. But that was a major letter which had all sorts of faults in it, which we will discuss later on. Okay. And when right. we ask, where is this coming from? Okay. Okay. Let's let's bring in. Um, because we don't Mr. know about it. If a tile, uh, hold on, Mr. Ligbe. Let's bring in um, a spokesman to Ned Woko, uh, Denny Fetayo. Are you uh, hearing me? Yes, we can hear you. But uh, hold on, we, we want to bring this. Are spokesman. you hearing me? Yes, we can. Um, Mr. Um, Ifetayo, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Okay, so... Um, uh, the, so can I go ahead? No, hold on, Mr. Aligbe. Let, let's hear from Mr. Adeni. Um, Mr. Adeni, yes. go on. You know, there's, there's been yeah. these accusations about, you know, not going through the right process to uh, get land for development in the community. Um, what's your response uh, to all of this? Um, um, thank you for this opportunity. A lot of lies have been spread uh, in the public space out there. Um, first and foremost, uh, my principal is a law-abiding citizen and is, uh, is an international lawyer who wouldn't do anything. In fact, for you to get a penny, you must go through the right process. He applied for the land in March 2015, and uh, the OB Council the land allocation committee, they sat down and looked at what intends to do with the land. And there was a letter, you know, uh, granting the permission that uh, uh, you can have the land now, uh, build a university. And part of the uh, request that my principal table before the OB in council was that uh, uh, after completing the university and the international golf course, 
40% stake belongs to the community. Our assistant, to be corrected, no rich man we build a kind of massive project and ceded 40 percent to the community and when they look at the nature of the project that they want to do and they will be gladly gladly approve uh, the land whether the extra 90 acres of land or the one for the university or for, for the golf course but all this land grabbing is just uh, to cajole the public but, but if you if you it listen was not until 20 yeah, if, if you listen to uh, Mr. Aligbe, if you, if you were listening to Mr. Aligbe, he said the OB does not approve um, land or doesn't approve uh, a purchase of land or giving of land in the community. It has to go through a process. So did he go through that process uh, before getting approval yes, for that land? Yes, yes. It was stated in this letter. It was stated in this letter that having considered the land allocation committee your intention, what you intend to do, and uh, it's even on the inside the MOU that was signed by the both party. They all had lawyer, the community had lawyer, the uh, International, which is owned by Prince Nedimoko, also has his own lawyer. It was signed. Just like he rightly said that if you need the land, you approach the allocation land committee. I want to build a school, I want to build a filling station. They will look at the advantages and all of that. And my principle is all about developing Dumoje. It's all about putting Dumoje in the global community. And no place in the world that you have a university or international golf course that will not be known. There will be hospitality. Okay. Will, you know, Mr. let's let's leave the motives out of it. You know, Mr. and all of Mr. that. And so Mr. So they now say, oh wow, even if you are giving back 40% to the community, Obina append the signature and said a memorandum of understanding should be drafted which was signed by all the major chiefs and the OB are saying that yes you can have this land and commend the project and there's also one condition he said if i did not develop this project within five years if nothing was done the community has right to revoke the land we have picture the university project is about 80 percent completed okay work ongoing who are the people working there? They are all Idumujis, uh, but the whole of this issue is about kingship tozo, not about land grabbing. Okay, Mr. Mr. Fatayo, I, I want you to hold on. Obama had been taken to court or arrested. Okay, we will get to the arrest case, but I want us to go back to what Mr. Ligwe earlier mentioned. He said, yes, indeed, you know, the land allocation committee received letters from you know Ned Unwoko, but. No, 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 not no. the land allocation committee. Let's get back to that. Okay. We saw that letter. And uh, and I'm sorry to pop in. Okay. If you look at the letter of allocation, which they are touting, the letter says the above request by so 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 was passed to me by the elders council, not okay. the allocation committee. Okay. Okay. So what is the elders council coming into this? All right, hold on, hold on, Mr. Aligbe. So if I tell you, I want to get back to you. So would you say yes. that it is false when Mr. Aligbe mentioned that Ned Nwoko brought soldiers, uh, you know, armed men and bulldozers to begin to clear people's farmland without prior authorization? Would you say that that's a false a, accusation? That, that, that was a blanter lie. That was a blanter lie. After he got the allocation, and there has to be commencement of work on the said land, and people moving, he paid compensation. He has paid over 200 million naira. To who? I know my principal. He will not release money without anybody appending their signatures to it. Who did Ned and Oko pay money to? Today. Pardon? Who did he pay? Who did Ned Oko pay money to? Is it the owners of the Their land? Their family, the people who. Yes. No, 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 no. Don't get it. It's a community land. People mm -hmm. farm on it. Okay. It does not belong to one family. So who was so paid? Just so like so who was paid? The 200 million you spoke about. Who, who, who are the people that got paid? No, individually. Family who said, uh, this uh, one acre belongs to me. I farm on it. These are my crop. Uh, another family who said, uh, this six plot is mine. This is where I farm and all of that. But since they have spoken to us, it's a community land. And everything has been documented. 
If you need it, I can send you all. All right. They have Quickly. all been paid, just as instructed in the MOU. Quickly, does your letter say does your letter say the approval was given by the land allocation committee or by the uh, Council of Chiefs? Is the other council of chiefs? The other council. So not the land, not the land allocation <laughs> yeah. committee. So the issue here, um, no, is the land. Hold on, hold on. The land allocation committee will report back to the uh, the Obin council, the elders council. We report back. This is what this man said he wants to do. We have gone to check. He can get this land, and I think in our own proposition we can give him to. Uh, uh, start whatever project he intends to do. So based on that, based on that, every organization has a board of trustee. Whatever decision a company wants to make, you know, at the end of the year, they feel the board of trustee. Then I say, okay, we give you approval. Okay, let's go ahead with what you said. Okay. They approve it. We, I have the copy of letter with me, and I think I've sent All it. All right, across. Mr. Ifetayo, please hold on. Mr. Ligbe, I want to bring you in here. I've heard from you and I've heard from yeah. you from Ned Woko's spokesman. So I think the issue here, um, yes. correct me if I'm wrong, are you, he mentioned that they approached the Elders Council, they approached the OB. But Mr. Alibe, um, are you saying the main issue yes, here is that Mr. Ned Woko bypassed the Land Allocation Committee to go straight to the OB and that that's the main issue? Is, is, is that it? No, no. The main issue is that the letter that talked in okay. is not... Okay. A letter that came from the community or the OB. Let me point out one or two things. I have just said that the OB said he got a letter from Elders Council, yes. which is not true. You were sent a copy of this letter. Yes. I beg you, if you look at the first page, there's a signature there. The date of the letter itself is 10 April. There is a signature on the front page, which has a date of 2nd June 2015. There is a signature on the, on the first page, 22nd uh, June 2015. Signature on the second page has a date of 31 May 2015. First inconsistency. Let's go back. That letter in itself, yes, check it. That letter in itself, if you go to, um, I think it's the one bit of it says they will prepare an MOU here and there. An MOU was signed by Ned Moko himself after all the others had signed on the 31st of May, which is the same day that this letter that Tauti was signed. That's the second. I have it. You have it. Check it so that we know what we are saying. Hmm. Okay? So that is the second, second bit. The third bit we are talking about is where he proposed to be building his university. How did he get there? First of all, he applied in that second letter for a land for university along the Wohimi uh, uh, boundary. How come he came to where he is and he started bulldozing people's land, bulldozing community land, and saying he's building a university? Those are the questions that you need to ask. When we get to the MOU, I will show you the exact equity that he put in in the MOU, which is touting as 40%. If, if you want, I will read it to you now so that you understand exactly what I am talking about. He says um, on the MOU, first of all, he has told us uh, uh, in, in one that Linus International is, is going to invest an estimated billions of Naira. That's it. Now he goes for the community equity. He says the land invested shall be valued at inception after adequate documentation. And the total value shall constitute the community's equity shareholding in the golf course project, which parties to the MOU shall agree at the round table discussion. I haven't seen any 40% anywhere in mm. this MOU. If you don't have a copy, ask them to send you so I don't say okay. anyone. It has been shown on our screen, actually, Mr. Alibe. So, so quickly, so um, Mr. Ifatayo, um, Mr. Alibe has said yes. that the uh, signing of documents, um, you know, have some inconsistencies. 
Uh, they didn't go through the right process, and it doesn't even seem like they really did come from the Igwe or the Council of uh, Chiefs. The right origin. Yeah, the right origin. So, so you know, would you quickly respond to that? And you mentioned 40%. How come the 40% is missing from the MOU? Okay, thank you very much. Um, first and foremost, uh, when they are talking about inconsistency, it's just from their imagination. This is one of the things they brought before the police, and it was well investigated. In fact, I'm sure if we want to get a CEO, this land we are talking about, the CEO had been given since 2015. And uh, the former chairman, local government of Aniocha, not local government, said before he can give out a CEO, he went, he prepared a report. I have the report with me as well. He met with the OB. Did you actually say that we should approve this land for this so, -so cause? Mm -hmm. And which the man in his report, because police invited him and asked him to prepare his own report. I have a copy with me. So every process was duly followed and the land was approved and the, and the uh, CEO post was gotten by my principal since 2015. So uh, when they are saying a buying consistency in the signature, I don't know where they got that from. Okay. But based on what we have, based on what the OB approved, it is rightly gotten. And my principal went through the whole process and the, the project started in 2015. I'm just saying there's no issue of land grabbing here. Okay, uh, so Mr. Ifetayo. The King Kosu that they are using because uh, the one who wanted to be an OB, my principal said, no, I can't support you for reason best known to me. Hmm. And he now said, I will make sure whatever project you want to do will be thwarted. I will revoke the land. No, I, so all those ones they are saying... Mr. Ifetayo, well, I want you to expatriate yes. on what you just mentioned, this um, kinship tells you you just mentioned. What exactly do you mean? Yes. Okay, all right. Um, uh, in 2017... My principal told uh, Prince Noso, his cousin, he said, I can never support you to become king for, I don't want to use the language on air, uh, for reason best known to me, for inconsistency on this and that. And the man said that everybody can build university, but not you. I will revoke the land. And he told the chiefs then, because the OB, the OB was late, he told the chief that whoever that is supporting that will not support me on this project will be banished from the community and to make sure you know he followed through his word he contacted one uh, the, the the then president of Idumojo uh, community development uh Ujuku. they brought in boys dogs they went to those chiefs house some of them are still alive they are living witness beat them, drag them, burn some of their property, burn houses, drag them to the palace in the presence of uh, Prince Nonso, being supervised by Ifeo Joko, that's Pamela's father, and those people, they are still alive. And when they call my principal as a man who believe in the rule of law, they all knew each other. They live in the same community. He told them, don't retaliate, go and make a report. So it was since 2017, that was when the crisis started. Okay, so Mr. Ife Tayo... Things have been peaceful so Mr. Ife Tayo, you are basically saying it's that this is... It's not always is... about land grabbing matter okay. at all. Okay, okay. Right. you are saying this is not an issue of land grab. This is an issue between Prince Ned Woko and um, the other print you mentioned. It's so. Wow. Okay, so since we're seeing a, a different perspective to this conflict from you, I want you to address... Um, Mr. Aligbe now, I, I want to bring you in. Um, I want you to address... Yes. Um, the, the allegations of arrest. And Ned Woko has been going to arrest people, owners of different lands, because he wants to actually use their, use their lands for his own personal product. Mr. Aligbe, can you confirm that that's I will true? Get, no farmer has been arrested. Yes. No, Mr. No, Aligbe, yes, yes, hold I will, on a second. I will get there. I will get there. Right. But please, this is a diversion from the main point. Hmm. Diversion is from land grabbing, which we have followed. They have uh, what they call customary right of occupancy, issued in 2016 with a survey plan of 2017. What level of fraud is this? Let's not get into that. But let's get back to the uh, issue of um, uh, arrest. Oh, people were, were, were beaten. People were, how did they get beaten? Because they're supporting a, de a development 
We had a meeting and we said to Ned, we support a university project, but you must approach land acquisition properly. The union said so. And all of us were there. We supported that project, but not the way it was uh, uh, going on land. Let's leave that alone. What happened is that the meeting after the OB, OB non Songoko, after burying his father, who died 6 February, and he was installed 7 February, according to our customs, he did the burial of his father. And then on the 19th of May, after all the burial, he called a meeting to say thank you to those who helped him. That meeting was disrupted by thugs, armed thugs, old men beaten, sent away and everything destroyed. The police came that day. Who did the that? The was complaining. Say it again. Who, who was responsible who for hiring thugs? thugs, Mr. Aligbe? We know, we know all the people who have been working for NED. They were the people who came in armed to destroy the meeting. There were a few people who we couldn't identify. Those who were there, I wasn't in the town then, so I can tell you exactly what it is. Those who were there saw people who were not part of the town, but they saw mainly those who have been vanguarding for NED. They came and destroyed everything and sacked the old men on the 19th. The police came after that, after that happened. And the natural ruler complained and they said, ah, you should have called us. You should have come to take permission. Natural ruler said, you don't take permission for a town hall meeting. It's okay for police protection, tell us. And the natural ruler now wrote to the police, we are holding this meeting four days time. You know, this is going with the market days. On the 23rd, please come and give us the protection. On that day, I'm told that the police came in their vehicle, drove around the town, and was no longer visible. Whether they were laying ambush somewhere, whether they were hiding, nobody could tell anything. As soon as the meeting convened, larger number of these dogs came in on the 23rd and wrecked havoc in the place. Some of the animals that were remnants of the burial, which the OB himself wanted to give away to various quarters. Some of them were shot and killed. We have pictures of those who Was were there carrying any guns arrest? and the rounds of ammunition Did on those, that day. Mr. Mr. Anibay, what happened in the place? Was there any arrest? Was yes. there any arrest by policemen as we've seen on, on you know, oh, yes. online? The policemen, the policemen arrested nobody. Like I said to you, maybe they were in ambush. Maybe they were hiding somewhere. Maybe they were not even available at all in the place. There was no arrest. So, so, right? event, so, so, and so. I was listening to I was listening to somebody. You have the tape also. Who said that there was mayhem? Somebody was killed and so on. How did somebody get killed? If anybody was killed at all, what brought the mayhem? Was it because they were struggling for OB or what? Hmm. Land. Even just to say thank you to the people, this place was invaded. And people were, 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 were humiliated. Old men had even their heads broken. The drinks they brought for them, the people who came in, drank some, broke the bottles all over the place. The pictures are there. All right, so, so let's, let's talk about did not the... Arrest, even though they were, they were invited to come and protect the place. No arrest, nothing. They went away. All right, let's talk about the person, okay. the, the, this girl's father, who, who is um, currently in custody. Yes, I'm coming to it. And, okay, let me get to the girl's father. This girl's father lives, is the president general of our union. He lives in Asaba. Asaba is about 25 kilometers, I think, from my village. He was not even there. Okay? And when there is mayhem anywhere, any part of the town, the first information goes to the president general of the town. That's it. But let me tell you what, what happens. Mr. Okei Fejoko is going through what is going because of two reports he wrote about the police and about NED. The first was just about the police. There was some heavy crime in the town. 
a woman was abducted missing. We didn't know. It was reported to the police in Iseluku. Nothing happened. The man suspected to have abducted that person was sending threats. Until 1 December, something happened. The same town, the same house where that woman was abducted, four people, including two children, were killed in cold blood. The house set ablaze. The police, it was reported to the police, and up till this moment, they have made no arrest, nothing on that. That is one. So he had to write and complain. The second is that 2016, when the letter, our former OB was alive, when the letter uh, uh, for allocation was uh, being touted around, the OB himself wrote, first of all, to Ned. He wrote it on the 26th of May. Ned received and signed for it on the 29th of May, 2015, telling him, I did not allocate land to you. Okay. Just stay on the 33 hectares who were given. It was written. Okay. He signed for it. it they should okay. be they should be able to give you the copy. I'm talking of 29th of May. Don't forget that I said that he did his MOU on the 31st of May after receiving that letter that said you are not entitled to this. I don't know if you don't have it. I can have time to send out to you, yeah, even if he doesn't want to. So, so that's it. Now, uh, uh, one Walter wrote to the police purporting that it was Nonsomoko, who was then just a crown prince, that forged Yobi's uh, signature on that letter. Okay. And the police came. It was investigated by one DCP, Mohammed Ubakura. And I can give you okay. the Mi report. Mr. Aligbe, Mr. Aligbe, please hold on. That, Mr. That, Aligbe. That from the forensic studies, no forgery was established. Okay. However, uh, the, the crown prince will have used his influence to get his father to sign that letter. All right, Mr. Alibe, so Mr. Alibe, can you hold on? Just to quickly wrap up, let's bring in Mr. Ifetayo's reactions. You know, Mr. Ifetayo, can you hear me? So, I can Mr. hear you. Okay, I want you to just to uh, give a final to... response to that. Okay, um, um, first and foremost, uh, there was never uh, a, a, an OB when the late to be passed on, it was because somebody wanted to impose himself. Uh, all this one he was talking about that uh, they disrupt and he did not make any complaint to the police. All right. And uh, will he accept? Will he accept be lying? He accept is the prime minister of the community, not like the second in command to the king. The man was dragged to the palace. Mr. Denny, Mr. Denny, Mr. Mr. Denny, because of because of yeah. time, because we need to wrap up, uh, we'll continue this conversation tomorrow, uh, God willing. But because of time, I want you to quickly address the uh, person who is currently under arrest, or the persons who are currently in uh, police custody. Um, Mr. Uh, Aligbe okay. has stated that they, he wasn't even, you know, on, on uh, in the community when these incidents took place. So why is he being, you know, held? I, well, I wouldn't know. That means you should ask the police. My principal, there was no name where he petitioned uh, the police or sue anybody. Let them bring out a copy. Ned is neither a victim, nor a complainant, nor a witness. So they are just cloud chasing, mentioning his name or giving a gay a script All right. that if you want your father to arrest, you'll be shouting like, uh, Ned's name. All right, Adeni Ifetayo. Ned does not have hand in it whatsoever. All right, Adeni Ifetayo, thank you so much. Uh, we're out of time. Uh, thank you for speaking with us. We will continue this conversation tomorrow. There's so much, you know, that we need to unwrap, and we hope that we can, you know, uh, yes. bring out some truth here and there and uh, get, get some understanding. Uh, Mr. Aligbe, Uche Aligbe, uh, thank you also for your time this morning. I truly appreciate it. Thank you for speaking with us. Yes. We'll bring you back again tomorrow. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, we'll take a break here and return to continue our conversation with a focus on women in politics. Do stay with us.